what's going on guys so out of absolutely fucking nowhere Nottingham Forest have launched a surprise bid to sign Jesse Lingard the former Manchester United man has been without a club for the best part of six weeks and is set to decide his next move by Friday before I give you a bit of background on Jesse as well as what to expect of him on the pitch I want to address some serious misconceptions that are being portrayed by the media in regards to this transfer first and foremost the narrative that he's choosing Forrest because he's a mercenary. For those unaware, he also has an offer on the table from Saudi Arabia. So if money were truly his only consideration, he'd already have made that move. While West Ham are a side he's previously been at and shone for, a lot has changed in his year away from the club and there's no guarantees he'll play a starring role upon returning. They've got plenty of depth in forward positions and are looking to add to it regardless of whether Lingard opts for them or not. From Jesse's perspective, He'll get to play week in, week out for Forrest in a talismanic role, which is something he desperately needs to both rejuvenate his career as well as be in contention for Gareth Southgate's World Cup squad for Qatar. Not to mention the fact that he'll be closer to his family in Nottingham than in London, which is no doubt a big consideration given the plethora of personal issues he's been through. It wasn't so long ago he had to take on responsibility of raising his younger brother and sister due to his mother undergoing treatment for clinical depression in hospital. All this while battling his own demons as the press were constantly berating his performances and dickheads on social media relentlessly abusing him for not producing more output. Now moving on to the second part, which is to do with his rumored £180,000 a week contract. While this is without question a shit ton of cash and modern day players are by and large overpaid prima donnas, we have to look at it through the lens of the footballing world. Is this something you'd expect a newly promoted side to be forking out? In all honesty, no. However, let's not forget that the man's a free agent and can thus command a lot more than an incoming wherein a transfer fee is involved. Even if the alleged 180 grand figure is accurate, let's do the actual math. That turns out to be about 770,000 per month and 9.2 million per year. If he signs on a three-year deal, that's a grand total of 27.7 million pounds, which is still less than the 30 million that Wolves are demanding for Morgan Gibbs White. And that doesn't even take wages into account. The former is someone who's had experience of representing England in the World Cup and Manchester United in the Champions League, while the latter is a talented youngster who showcased one exceptional season at championship level. When you put things into context, it's not quite as ludicrous as the media would have you believe. In terms of Jesse himself, I've got really mixed feelings about the bloke. On the one hand, Man United proper fucked him over last season. Despite only having a year left on his contract in the summer of 2021, they asked for a fee in the region of 25 to 30 million pounds, which no one in their right mind would be willing to pay knowing full well he could be gotten on a free in 10 months. Then, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer made it clear both publicly and privately that Lingard would have a big role to play going forward since he decided to stay, only to give him minutes very sparingly. Frustrated by this, Lingard tried to head to Newcastle in January on loan in order to get more game time, but United rejected the offer and insisted he could only join them on a permanent basis, and that too for an exorbitant fee given their new cash-rich owners. As they fell away, West Ham and Tottenham made inquiries which were rebuffed due to boardroom fears of strengthening a potential rival in the top six race. So the club neither let him play nor leave, which sums up the circus it has become post Sir Alex. However, the entitlement Lingard showcased after this ordeal has more or less ruined his legacy at Old Trafford. People bang on about his dancing on TikTok and all that jazz, but I couldn't give a toss about any of that, quite frankly. It's not my cup of tea, but he's free to do as he pleases in his own time as long as it's not against the law. What does bother me, however, is him leaking confidential information in the dressing room to the media, which played a major role in creating a toxic environment around the club, with infighting and high school level drama taking place that gave the press an endless supply of ammunition. Not that it was needed, with the shit on a stick performances being served up twice a week. While Lingard had long been the suspected culprit, Paul Scholes confirmed it on live television when he bizarrely decided to divulge their private conversation for all to see. Not the type of behavior you expect from a professional whatsoever, on both counts. Like some of his contemporaries, Lingard also appears to be tone deaf when it comes to his business decisions. The guy launched a fashion label and advertised a brand of fucking pistachio peanuts shortly after crushing defeats for Man United. I'm all for players having a life outside the game and trying to create a steady flow of income for themselves and their family post-retirement, but there's a time and place. Lingard's entitlement also reared its ugly head for one last time in the final home game of the season. Interim manager Ralph Ragnick left him out of the squad because Jesse asked for time off and didn't train for a few weeks. In retaliation, he got his brother to log on to Instagram and lambast the club for not giving him a send-off. One could argue he has no control over what his family members have to say, but that's absolute bollocks in my view. If that were really the case, he'd have stated publicly that it's merely his brother's opinion or tried to get him to backtrack, but he very much wanted it out on social media. 
The likes of Rio Ferdinand and Patrice Evra were shown the door without properly saying goodbye, yet this fella who hasn't done half as much as the pair of them did for the club wants hugs and kisses from the fan base. Absolute piss take. Overall, however, he didn't appear to have any issues off the pitch at any of the previous clubs he's been at, so I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. In fact, former teammates often only had good things to say about him. That being said, Steve Cooper and the rest of the coaching staff will have to carefully manage his ego. Keep him happy and you have a player who will run through a brick wall for you on the pitch and be a positive influence off it. Conversely, rub him up the wrong way and he'll try and burn the motherfucking house down. Cheers for tuning in folks, I'll make a separate video breaking down everything he'll offer tactically and purely focus on his footballing abilities if and when he does sign, but I wanted to give you a flavour of everything that's gone on behind the scenes, as well as explain why you should ignore the negative spin the media are attempting to put on this. I can see Lewis O'Brien's officially signed, so I'll make sure to record content in terms of what he has to offer early tomorrow morning. Jesse Lingard's clearly a bit like Marmite, he completely splits opinion, but whether you like him or loathe him, there is an absolutely wonderful footballer in there on his day. I look forward to hearing your thoughts in the comments down below and hope you've had a good one. Peace.